Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we're building an RC Wegs robot that you can steer using remote control. Let's get started. What is a Wegs robot? Wegs robots were originally created in 2002 at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. In conjunction with design and control principles inspired by cockroach locomotion, these robots used wheel legs, or Wegs, which enable them to quickly locomote over uneven terrain and easily climb over tall obstacles. A later version of these robots, called Mini Wegs, reduced the number of wheel legs from 6 to 4, resulting in a compact machine that could run at sustained speeds of over 10 body lengths per second and safely fall distances several times its height. The remote control WEGS robot in this video is made out of the following components. A base plate, control electronics comprised of an Arduino microcontroller, a DC motor driver board and an RF receiver, a AA battery pack with an integrated on and off switch, two DC motors in a micro servo body, two side panels, a translucent visor, two 1.5mm diameter dowel pins, two shaft collars, four wheel legs, and various screws to fasten everything together. The original Mini WEGS robot used two drive motors, one which mechanically coupled all of the wheel legs, and one which actuated a rack and pinion between the front wheel legs to regulate turning. In this design, each wheel leg is actively driven at all times, which makes it easier for the robot to travel in a straight line and push itself up tall obstacles. For mechanical simplicity, the robot in this video has two independently driven front legs with one motor each, and two passive back legs that spin freely as the robot moves. Turning is accomplished by regulating the speed of each motor. When both motors rotate at the same speed, the robot travels in a straight line. When the motors travel at different speeds, the robot turns in the direction of the slower spinning wheel leg. The electronics that regulate the robot's motion are comprised of three circuit boards, an RF-M4 wireless receiver, a TB6612 DC motor driver breakout board, and an Arduino Pro Mini. These three boards work together as follows. When a button is pressed on a remote control, the receiver wirelessly senses the input on the remote and changes the state of one of its pins from low to high. The Arduino senses this state change and then commands the TB6612 breakout board to set the rotation direction and speed of the two DC motors. The breakout board does this using an H-bridge for each motor. The direction in which a motor spins is dependent on the sign of the voltage across the motor leads. In an H-bridge, the direction of the voltage can be selected by transistors connected to digital pins on a microcontroller, which act as switches. Activating one set of transistors while keeping the other set deactivated closes the circuit and causes current to travel through the motor, which creates a voltage drop across the motor leads and makes the motor spin in one direction. Activating the other set of transistors while keeping the first set deactivated reverses the electrical path across the motor leads, creating a voltage drop in the opposite direction and making the motor spin in the opposite direction as well. The speed at which a motor rotates is dependent on the magnitude of the voltage across the motor leads. Adding another switch to the top of the circuit and regulating its position with the PWM signal decreases the magnitude of the voltage across the motor leads and therefore allows a person to regulate a motor's speed. The first step in the electronics assembly process was to program the Arduino. I plugged the Pro Micro into my computer's USB port, opened the Arduino IDE, and then opened a sketch I had written previously that implements the robot's movement behavior. I then clicked the upload button in the IDE menu bar, which compiled the code and uploaded it to the Arduino. After the LEDs finished blinking, I unplugged the board from my computer and began to wire up the circuit. I wired up the RF receiver, motor driver breakout board, Arduino, and two DC motors as shown in the circuit diagram. Overall, the wiring process is straightforward, but there are quite a few wires to solder. Since there won't be a lot of room in the robot chassis, be sure to use as short a wire length for each connection as possible, as this will keep the overall circuit clean and make it easier to debug should something go wrong. After completing the wiring, I inserted four AA batteries into the battery pack and flicked on the switch. I then performed an electrical test with the components by marking the motor's output hubs with a pen and making sure that everything moved as expected when I pressed the buttons on the RF remote control. With the electronics complete, it was time to design the robot's components. For this, I used SolidWorks, a computer-aided drafting or CAD software package used by engineers to design mechanical parts and assemblies. Designing parts virtually greatly speeds up the design process as everything can be assembled and verified within the software before any parts are manufactured. 
Once I finish designing the parts, I save them as STL, or stereolithography files, which saves the components as a set of triangular meshes. The STL files were then imported into a slicing program, which analyzes the components and generates G-code that tells a 3D printer how to make the object one layer at a time. The G-code is then transferred to a 3D printer, which causes the print head to move through a series of waypoints. This particular printer uses a process called fuse deposition modeling, where molten plastic is extruded out of a print head as it travels across a print bed. A quick shout out and thank you to Rigid Ink, a UK based company that manufactures 3D printing filament. They sent me a free sample of their clear red PLA which I used to print a portion of the robot. Please check them out at rigid.ink and request your own sample today. With the 3D printing done, it was time to assemble the robot. In total, the 3D printer made 8 components. A base plate, two side panels, two front wegs, two passive rear wegs, and a translucent visor to protect the electronics. I first attached the two side panels to the base plate using four 15mm long M2 screws. The screw holes in the side panels are clearance holes, which will allow the screws to go through the plate without any resistance before engaging with the base plate below. While you could pre-tap the holes in the base plate using an M2 tap wrench, the plastic is generally soft enough for the screws to self-thread into the base plate as everything is tightened down. I next glued two 1.5mm diameter diameter dowel pins that were 20mm long into the holes in the back plate using super glue. These are the axles for the robot's passive back wegs. Again, the holes for the dowel pins are clearance holes, so be sure to do your best to align these perpendicularly with the side panel's edges. Once the glue dried, I attached the DC motors to the side panels. At this point, I realized I made a mistake in already soldering the motors to the motor driver breakout board since the entire assembly could not fit through the side panel's mounting slots. To fix this, I cut the wires connecting the motors and motor driver breakout board, and then attach the motors to the side panels. During this step, make sure that the output hubs of the motors are oriented toward the front of the chassis, and that the motors spin in the correct direction when pressing the forward button on the remote. Once the motors were screwed in, I re-soldered the wires and wrapped them with some electrical tape. I then inserted the battery pack into the rear of the chassis, and glued the circuit board into the front of the chassis with dabs of hot glue. The important part of this step is to make sure that none of the circuit boards go past the front edge of the chassis to make sure that they don't interfere with the visor. I next attach the visor to the chassis using two more M2 screws. The front drive wegs have a feature which allows them to slip over the output hubs of the DC motors. After slipping the drive goes onto the motor, I fasten them to the motor by driving screws to their center of rotation into the motor's output hubs. The final step was to attach the passive back wegs. These are held in place with two shaft collars. I slid the back wheels over their axles and then fastened down the shaft collars. At this point, the robot was done and ready to be taken for a test drive. I took the robot outside and drove it around my front yard. In general, the robot handled the outdoors well. However, it had a little trouble over taller grass, as the grass would wrap itself around the motor hub, causing the motor to stall. This could be addressed by making the mating holes in the driven wheels deeper, eliminating the extra space between the wheel and the motor hub. On concrete, the robot had no such problems, and I had a fun afternoon piloting it around my driveway. The WEGS robot is a fun, relatively simple robotics project for anyone looking to get into electronics, and a good mobile platform that can be customized with relative ease. Since the Arduino is essentially only used to regulate the battery voltage for the RF receiver and to generate PWM commands, it's possible to use the microcontroller's open pins to add sensors and implement more complex driving behavior such as line following or obstacle avoidance. Another way this project could be improved is by using another RF receiver and remote control. As the RF receiver only outputs a binary signal when a button is pressed, it's only possible to execute specific predefined driving and turning behavior. Using a remote control and RF receiver capable of handling analog values would allow a person driving the robot to manually control the robot's velocity and turning radius. I really hope that this project taught you something that you didn't know before and inspired you to learn something more about a little part of the project. If you would like to build this project yourself, a complete bill of materials as well as links to the STL files and Arduino code can be found in the video description below. If you end up building your own WEGS robot, or have any other cool projects that you'd like to show off, I'd love to see it. Please share links with me in the comments below, or connect with me on social media. Well, that's all there is to this episode. Thanks for watching, now go super make something. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. To keep up with my latest projects, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out more episodes by clicking on the video to the right. Connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and be sure to visit supermakesomething.com to download files for this and other projects. See you next time! Now go super make something!